what we're trying to sail. And I think this is about the 15th time that this, this Genoa has gone in. It's been out, in, out, in. It's like the Hokey Cakey, isn't it, Beverly? Yeah, it is. But it's just gone away again. It was you flapping. You a bit of line out in your side place. Yeah, it was flapping. And, um... I don't know how it feels. <laughs> Yeah, Beverly's flapping now. We're doing a bit of flapping too, yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, trying to do our best with the wind and things, but... All four knots of it. Oh! Yeah. And we're doing four knots. <laughs> so draw your own conclusions from that one. Yeah, so it's just gone away. We've still got the main up, but I think that's going to be uh, tightened up in a second, so... Very, very dull, I'm afraid. I'm oh, sorry to say. I wonder if it's Ian doing anything, to be honest. Uh, doesn't look like it's doing much. Anyway, we'll, uh, if it's not doing anything, we'll put it away. So, madam, you've been complaining. Oh. Yes, I don't like very dull passages. I like to sail, not to motor. I hate being a motor boat, really. We've got four knots of wind on the nose. And, shock horror, we're travelling at four knots, so... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's any wind out here. Yeah, plenty of rolly stuff, though. Yes. Whoa! Feel that? I did. And um, I've been told that uh, Atlantic swells are much larger, but in the North Sea the swells are... You're not in the North Sea. Sorry, Irish Sea. I don't even know my geography. It's ridiculous. The shorter and chop, you know, shorter wave periods, aren't they, Bob? They are. They're, they're quite a short period. And so... As soon as one's passed, the next one's coming in to thump you. Yeah, not really looking at the camera though much. No, I'm looking at you. Oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> We're having a little convo. I know. You're having a complaint, you're having a moan. I know, I just want to sail. That's what I'm complaining about. <laughs> yeah, well, at least the Isle of Man has more or less disappeared. There's only the faintest trace of it behind us now. It took ages for it to disappear because um, I was beginning to think that maybe we'd um, tied a rope to it and pulling, <laughs> pulling it with us yeah because the thing is even though we were closer to Ireland um, the hills in Ireland are just smaller than they are in the Isle of Man yeah so we were 20 miles away from the Isle of Man and 10 from Ireland but Isle of Man just looked bigger it did yeah Oh dear. So we're just sitting here, drinking tea, reading books and being bored absolutely witnessed by a rather dull passage. Yeah, we'll try and keep the exciting bits for you, but honest to goodness, not many of those I'm afraid. No, not really. It's going to be very dark when we get in tonight. We'll probably get into Bangor or Carrick sometime around 10 o'clock or midnight. Yeah, luckily I've been in there in the dark before now. Mm. Um, but the only interesting thing that's going to happen is I'm going to go through um, Copeland Sound the wrong way! Again! Again! I'll be going against a foul tide, but it's preferable, the foul tide in there is preferable to... The foul tide out here? Yeah, basically. Yeah. Alright, what we'll do is we'll, we'll angle in a bit, get ourselves close into the coast and just get on with it. Might as well. We just thought we'd um, give a use an opportunity to talk about our loo. Yeah, it's a really crappy subject. So, <laughs> if you don't want to know about that crap subject, then tune off. <laughs> yeah, spin on now. Yeah, 
Um, it's something we come across quite a lot in yacht forums and there are people always having difficulties with toilets and I, I, I read the stories of the difficulties and I wonder what they're doing to be quite honest because ours very rarely presents us with any difficulty at all. Mm. And um, I think really if there's a reason for that it's because of one cardinal principle we have on this yacht. Mm -hmm. And that is very very simply expressed by this little saying. If it doesn't go through you, it doesn't go down the loo. And a lot of people will get quite uppity about that, like, oh, you've got little bags full of poo and things like that. And, well, no, the poo goes down the toilet, but the paper goes into nappy sacks, sent nappy sacks. And for those people who say, oh, that's disgusting, all I can say is you've obviously never changed a nappy in your life. You've never had children. <laughs> the yeah. other thing, though, is about putting it in the nappy sack is... Um, They're scented. Th they are scented, but also um, it means that you're not getting the paper down the pipe. Um, and that's what usually clogs up your toilets. toilets. Uh, uh, I've seen a number of people who said, oh, it's time for the paper declogging. And you think, well, why did you put it down there? Okay. Yeah. The previous owners of Salty Last did have a policy on toilet paper. They did put it down the toilet, but it was a rather severe policy. They believed that sort of three squares would do anybody, you know, once for up, once for down, and once for a polish. Um, but <laughs> we're, we're a bit, a little bit more generous than that, I have to say. <laughs> So one of the things that we think is advantageous to us is our toilet design is incredibly simple. It is. The outflow from the toilet goes via a swan neck into the holding tank above the water line so it can never back siphon. And the only way to get things off the boat is to open the seacock on the bottom of the uh, holding tank. There are no Y valves, there are no diverter valves or anything like that. Um, the only way to get it out is to pump it into the tank and then empty the tank. And it's a gravity fed tank. There are no pumps, there's no pressure fittings, nothing like that. It just drops out. Um, one of the things that we did do was we added a pump out facility um, so that uh, when we're in a marina, um, if then... We're, if we're stuck for a while. Yeah, like at winter, you know, we'll be in a marina for 12 months, six months. As the staff at Bangor will quite happily attest, <laughs> we occasionally go over to the uh, pump out facility and out it comes. Now, some pump out facilities around the UK you do have to pay for, but Bangor is one of the places where it's free, so... <laughs> You're paying for it in other ways, I suspect. I suspect you are, but, you know, at least we can use it. Um, now, another policy is about smell. Mm. Um, you know, how do we keep the snell down? Now, when we're in a marina, um, we never use the um, toilet um, for um, we, big jobs. We use marina facilities as much as we can. Yes. Um, so even when it's in the daytime, we'll use the marina facilities. But at the night time, that's when we'll tend to... If it's one in the morning, you don't want to go walking up the pond too. <laughs> no, exactly. So that's when we do use our own. But what we use in the marina is we use fresh water to um, clean out the bowl. And because we're using fresh water, um, it means that you keep the smell down. Because the smell actually is because there's a reaction between urine and salt water yeah. so that is where the smell comes from and so an, and another side effect of that reaction is that calcium is deposited mm. out from that reaction and that's what coats all the things so when you are servicing your head and you've got all that gray calcium stuff that's where it's come from if you use fresh water when you can you'll get a lot less calcium in your system um to keep calcium uh build up down um, one of the things that we do is we use vinegar. We do. We, we, on a regular basis. We put about a litre of vinegar down, pump it into the system, leave it for a while and then pump it all through. Hmm. Um, that really helps keep the calcium deposits down. Um, when you do actually release your stuff into the uh, ocean, um, you can see little speckles of grey after you've done that as the calcium gets all flushed out. Yeah. Now when we um, do go out and um, we flush um, the system through, initially the water um, as you bring it out of the sea is very brown. Now that is because um, in the pipe 
there's a lot of organisms that live in that area and well, of course they die. They live in seawater and once you pump them in the pipe and then leave them in there for a couple of days. Yeah, they die and that is why the water is brown and again that's another reason to be using fresh water as much and as you can. And it's another reason why when you pump it after you've been away from the boat for a few days it absolutely reeks to heaven. Oh it's terrible. <laughs> yeah, luckily you've uh, managed to avoid that smelly subject. <laughs> Uh, oh, and before anybody starts blasting the comments section down there in comment land. Um, oh, you're releasing all that stuff, that sewage into the sea. Yeah, we are. Where do you think fish poop goes? Where do you think seagull poop goes? Where do you think whale poop goes? Yeah. It, what we put in is no more unnatural than what other animals are putting in by the billions of tonnes per day. Whereas in the, when you're in a marine or in a confined area, that's why you need your pump out facilities, yes. isn't it? I'd, I'd, I'd hear nature has a cycle for processing it. So as long as you're not putting lots of paper and other nasties down the toilet and dumping them in the sea, there shouldn't be an issue. Yeah. Um, now, with our pump, um, sometimes we get a squeak. Uh, and we use olive oil um, to keep that squeak at bay, don't we, Beverly? Yeah, we pour we pour about a, a tablespoon of olive oil down into the uh, into the uh, bowl, and we we pump it through the system, and it coats everything with oil, and it just takes all the squeaks out. In there, yeah. 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 But already, you can hear it quieting down. But why don't we use um, rapeseed oil? I don't know about rapeseed, um, but certainly cornflower oil and sunflower oil, I, not cornflower, yeah, corn oil and sunflower oil, I've been told, are more aggressive toward the um, gaskets and things in the pump mechanism, whereas olive oil is gentler on them. So, And of course, you never use something like WD-40 because that's a... Um, it's a mineral oil. That's a mineral oil. You want uh, something, because you know it's going to go through the toilet, you want something that's organic so that it can... Because um, it's going to get pumped out. You want it to decompose easily. Exactly. Um, you know, you do need to think about uh, the marine... Um... Yeah, and we eat olive oil. <laughs> well, that's true, so... <laughs> so it can't be too harmful. One other thing that we did discover... Uh, in, early quite early on is that when you are re releasing the tank to get rid of it um, it can sort of partially block a little bit now it's easy to remove it all you have to do is go downstairs turn the uh, water to pump and start pumping more water into the tank and the, the water cascading down from the top of the tank to the bottom of the tank disturbs it and you usually get another blast coming out so you get one big blast it might stop start pumping fresh or not fresh water fresh sea water into the tank and usually get another bit out and just we, we we do about 50 more pumps to clean the tank don't we yeah just to make sure that um you know as much of the um sludge on the bottom sludge is the bottom because it sits in the bottom like a sludge and once you've emptied the tank a bit if you can get that sludge out it just it's just less stuff to clog the system up yeah all right so to sum up uh, if it doesn't go through you don't put it down the lay um Flush with fresh water whenever you can do so. Whenever you're releasing the tank to the sea, um, try and flush the tank out after you've released it and give it a good solid flush. Use vinegar um, to keep the calcium deposits down and use an olive oil uh, to basically keep the gaskets and things like that uh, working well. And also, you can also buy. Um, a brand of very very strong smelling floral disinfectants and you can almost put those down and put a bit of water and leave it in the bottom of the bowl just just to keep the smell down yeah oh and one one final tip never put bleach down your line <laughs> it doesn't do the system any good it doesn't do the gaskets any good it doesn't do the pump mechanism any good and it probably doesn't do a lot of good for the marine environment so vinegar is natural oil is natural poop is natural and paper, olive... paper isn't, yeah. and bleach isn't, so keep, keep it to the naturals, stay away from the unnaturals.
it's a bright sunny morning and we've made it to Carrick. <laughs> we got in at stupid o'clock. <laughs> so everything just got dumped in the cockpit. Um, there's mirroring lines everywhere. We haven't put the covers on the winches. Um, we just zipped the sail up. We haven't actually put the sail foot on or the sail covers. Um, we've got so much to do. <laughs> Uh, but we've obviously come to a rather unused hammerhead and I think the first job to do is clean up the little calling cars that the seagulls have left just so that we're not tracking guano into the boat. But that won't take terribly long and then it'll be able to see the marina office, get a few things sorted out and we're going to go from there. But first things first. 